Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit specials is provided by Cashfly at c a c h e f l y dot com. This is Twit special number one hundred seventy two. The iPad Air teardown. Leo Laporte here, and joining me right now, Kyle Weens. He is, of course, with iFixit dot com. Hi, Kyle. Hi, Leo. The greatest uh, resource for repair manuals, parts, information. How many guides do you have now? On uh, I mean, huh. I think people we're for pretty close to ten thousand. That's a that's a, and it's not just. I mean, it's, it's toasters too. That's what blew me away. It's yeah, our mission is to teach everybody how to fix everything. Anything. You own it. It's your right to fix it. But so I that think means everything from toasters to cars to iPads. Cars, too. That's neat. Uh, and motorcycles. Wow. Yeah, yeah. we've got, uh, you want to know how to change the oil in your Harley? We've got you uh, covered. It's, I mean, the thing is, people are always asking me, is, is such and such, is my oscilloscope repair manual and I fix it? And I, I never know because it's a community site where just like Wikipedia, people are contributing new information all the time. I love that. Here's the, how to fix the free wheelchair mission Gen 1. This is a uh, wheelchair used in, uh, it says, impoverished con countries. Uh, yeah, that's a really cool project. That was, uh, they came to us and said, hey, we, we've shipped about a million of these wheelchairs wow. to the developing world. Wow. Uh, and when we give them to people, we also give them spare parts because the wheelchairs break. Right. Uh, and, and they were trying to figure out a better way to train people how to install the parts. And so they said, hey, could you, could you guys help us with the repair manual? So we got some community members that were uh, interested in wheelchairs and they, wow. they wrote the manual. And, and so this is the people who are using these wheelchairs don't generally have Internet access. So uh, a lot of times they're printing those manuals, translating them into the relevant languages. Basically, it's a lawn chair with wheels. Yeah, that's their v, uh, Gen 1, and then the, the future one, or the, the next version, I think, looks a little more sophisticated. But it turns out lawn chairs are pretty darn ergonomic. They're and you comfortable. Them all I, if I could have wheels on my lawn chair, I would do it. <laughs> that's awesome. So, Kyle, you got the iPad Air, and one of the things that iFixit does is you, you get them, you need to get this, like, the minute it's out. So you actually send somebody to Australia to get this. Yes. So in the case of the iPad Air, one of our uh, teardown engineers, Walter, uh, went to Australia and waited in line. Oh, man. Uh, he, was, he was in line. The, the mall, you know how these, these lines go sometimes. He had to wait outside the mall overnight. They wouldn't oh. let him wait inside. Oh. Yeah. Did, so did cool. you have to draw straws for this particular assignment? Like, <laughs> I don't want to go. Yeah. Everybody loves going to Australia. So All right. We've got we've got uh, some really cool uh, friends that run Mac Fix it Australia, which is a, a repair shop in Melbourne, and they're fantastic. So that's uh, awesome. They they treat us very nice. We come and hang out with them, and then uh, you know we wait in line, and then we take it back to their office and do the yeah. Because you do the teardowns down there, you don't you don't try to get it back and then tear it down. You want to do it as promptly as possible. Yeah, I mean, in an ideal situation, we'd have it in our lab here where we where we could do it. But uh, in order to get it fast. Uh, we have one person go wherever he has to go to get the new new gizmo, and then he takes it apart, takes photos, uploads them, and then we wow. actually do our analysis off of the photos. Ah, interesting, interesting. Well, yeah, you always you always have the teardowns before anybody. I know you'll have a Nexus Five teardown probably by Friday of this week. I've got mine on order. Yeah, we don't. I, I, you know, I wish I had friends at Google. I know. <laughs> Me too. I do have friends at Google, and I still had to buy it. So let's start. Uh, who's there? Now who's, are you doing the teardown, Kyle? It looks like you got somebody to do the teardown for you. I've got Mira here with me. Mira, hello, Mira. Hello, how's it going? It's good. So uh, has this iPad been taken apart before, or is this a fresh, virginal iPad? So this is a fresh one, but I did start it right before the taping because uh, to take the initial panel off, that takes sometimes forever and a half, my rough estimate. What, what takes so long? Melting the glue? Yeah, so um, there's basically glue strips right around the perimeter. And in order to do that, we have this thing called the eye opener, which essentially you microwave this little sack <laughs> and you place it on the perimeter to loosen the adhesive. And then, you know, w once you have this area hot, then you go around and you kind of wedge in essentially glorified guitar picks 
uh, because they're nice and thin and you can go in between the panels without uh, damaging the components inside. Uh, so the, so the, the, the glue doesn't have to be heated up super hot. It just has to be kind of warmed up so it softens, basically. Exactly. And yeah. if, you, uh, if you take a heat gun to it, as we have in the past, if you're not very careful, uh, you end up warping the LCD underneath. And you can warp the LCD or the home button is made of plastic. You can melt and, that. <laughs> yeah, you can melt that. You can, yeah, uh, yeah it's it's uh, tricky. So so we have over time kind of figured out the easiest way for people to get inside. Which that is, bag looks like a thing I've had for like injuries. Like you heat yes. it up and you put it on your hip because your hip hurts. It's the well, same kind the, of thing. It's got the beads in there. The engineer that works for us, uh, uh, Brittany, is uh, a mood lances as a massage therapist on the on the uh -huh. side. Her idea to do that. She said, "Hey, you know this," and we we tried some of the the devices that she had, and they seemed like they worked okay. I love that. Kyle, how many of these things have you broken in the, in the process of tearing down? Do, they, do you so often our, break our them? iPad, yeah. When the iPad 2 came out, we're trying to figure out how to get inside it. We probably broke six or eight <gasps> iPads in the process. Oh my of, god. Figuring out, yeah. So, I mean, well, this is why you need a repair manual because if everybody started from scratch without without uh, any idea how to get inside, you're always going to break the first one. Right. So now, after having that experience with the iPad 2, this is fairly you, you understand a little bit about how you're going to be taking it apart now. Yeah, right? we've we've got it dialed in reasonably well. Although I got to say, the iPad Mini sort of took it to the next level. Yeah. <laughs> it was even more difficult to get in. And then, uh, as you'll see when we get inside this, this particular design takes a lot of cues from the iPad Mini. Well, you, uh, you, it's funny. Just as Apple every time says it's the best iPad we've ever made, the thinnest, the lightest, you always say it's the least repairable iPad we've ever seen. <laughs> it seems progress in both directions. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, we're we're increasingly concerned. Uh, the idea that this is the status quo and this is the only yeah. way to make a device like this yeah. is wrong. There's lots of other companies making uh, products that are uh, just as thin. Yeah. Um, but... I, I'm concerned that people are, are getting the impression that this is the only possible way to design this, and it's just not the case. Are there so there are tablets of this kind that are easier to repair and replace? Yeah, I mean the Nexus Seven is pretty easy to work on. The Kindle Fire is is pretty easy uh. to work on. So we put out our uh, you know repairability chart where you can see all the tablets ranked, and uh, you know the iPads aren't the worst. The the Surface Pro is the worst. But mm -hmm. there's some very good tablets out there. I mean, the uh, the Dell's tablets do pretty well. Um, uh, is there a correlation between well. thinness and repairability? I mean, is, are they are they harder to repair because they're so thin? The, the correlation is between glue. So glue is one way to make it thin, but you can do it with with tabs too. I mean, the Nexus Seven is pretty darn, darn it is thin. thin. Yeah. And it's uh, very easy to get in. You could pry the back off of that and repl replace mm -hmm. the battery yourself with a fingernail. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not was, <laughs> that's not what you're using today. It looks like good, big blue guitar picks. We have a guitar yeah. picks, and it, it's a uh, process and patience. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> Don't rush it. <laughs> so the issue is you've got the glass on the outside, and the glass is is very thin, and then the glass isn't glued to the LCD, but it's glued to the bezel all the way around. Yeah, and so you have to uh, loosen in and you know. Uh, work your way in you're basically slicing the adhesive and working your way around and it takes i mean i would plan on spending half an hour the first time you yeah. take apart an ipad heat it up loose you know work your way into the adhesive and just keep um, working your well, way go around. ahead don't don't let me hold you up the other thing too is that we're taking apart a brand new one right now and so all of the glass is intact yeah. but we've had repairs in the past where you know if you accidentally i don't know hit a hit it with a baseball or something or drop it onto concrete the glass spider webs all over the place. Right. And what ends up happening is maybe two thirds of the panel is intact and then the rest, so like, you know, it might take you half an hour to get that big panel off. Uh, and then the rest of the stuff, you essentially spend another half hour to a couple of hours picking away Gosh. the little glass shards what because fun. they're stuck to the glue. Oh, and you can't not take them out because then the new panel won't sit on it properly. Right. The glass and the panel are, merge together you can't separate those or you can you on can. these ipads okay. on the iphone you can't if okay. they're glued together but on the ipad they're not right. so if you if you break just the glass you can you can just Still replace that off. you don't have to swap out the lcd right. so right now he's uh, he's putting these uh, guitar picks wedging them into oh look yeah, it's kind of coming it's up a little bit. Coming up a little bit, yeah. You cannot yeah. be in a hurry to do this and i so i i you're not still heating it so i gather that it kind of retains the heat pretty well it stays uh, soft 
you know, I already went around the perimeter with the eye opener uh -huh. and I already loosened it partially. But Got the problem it. is um, there's actually a cable right here that we've found out through uh, you know, <laughs> several trial and error. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, I have to be very careful to just slightly bend the panel around the perimeter so that it kind of slowly comes up without actually shattering. And then and then it'll just kind of lift over and that'll be that. But, these, do you, you know, sell these picks or could you just use regular? They're smaller. They're bigger than guitar picks, it looks like. Uh, we custom designed yeah. these, but you can use thin guitar picks. You wouldn't want to use that a bass work. pick. You'd want okay. to use a thin Don't use a bass pick. pick. There's uh. tip number one. <laughs> I play bass, so that's. I have to. I have my uh, my, my you know my safe. my ProTech toolkit. I don't have the guitar picks in there, so I have to have to get those. <laughs> I was going to follow along and tear this apart. With me. <laughs> you were you were the guys who invented the use of the spudger, I think, as a way of. Yeah, I think we popularized the spudger in in Apple service manuals way back in the day. They called it a black plastic stick. Well, and, and they were using literally paint scrapers, weren't they? In the in the very uh, earliest for the iPad, uh, the I'm sorry, the the Mac Mini, they yeah. were using paint scrapers. Yeah, yeah. And it turned out that I, I found out this the behind the scenes story with that. At one point, I think they were trying to develop a custom tool, and they ran out of time, and so somebody went down to Home Depot and bought a paint scraper, <laughs> and it worked fine. And so, like in all of Apple service manuals, they show the like the Home Depot part number. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we've been selling the exact same. Paint scraper is Apple for a long time. Did you sure. coin the term? Oh, look! It's a, oh, oh, go back to it. He's got it. Yeah. There goes the glass. It's coming off. And there's the there's the cable. Yeah, and there's the. This is actually glue. This glue. is glue. What uh, kind of? Do they use a special Apple glue or is it just regular glue? <laughs> show it to the camera. Okay. So yeah, and then so there it is. Uh, there's you know the, the guitar picks are still stuck because of the glue. Uh, somewhere in this mess, you could, there's a little teeny tiny cable. Yeah. Um, and this is even more now complicated because you can't just take this guy out now. Uh, you have to dig underneath the LCD in order to get this cable free. So I'll be doing that next. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. And that's a different process in the air than in the past iPads. With the past iPads, once you got the glass off, you could you could pop the, the cable loose. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is this a process that Apple itself does in, in repairing these things, or does Apple just throw them away? That's a good question. I think it's at the point where there's enough money that they're possibly doing the repairs. We know on the iPhones they definitely are. Uh, we if, know that there are a lot of independent service shops. They're making a lot of oh, money. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've seen, and I think that's probably your number one uh, uh, customer here because I've seen, uh, you know, these guys all over the place, and they will repair almost anything. Yeah, well, and what we have found, and, and this is our um, disagreement with Apple, is that once you get the information out there and you make it open, you end up with a, a huge ecosystem of people from local repair shops to schools to, you know, IT uh, uh, shops inside the businesses where they're able to do this service. And we think that overall it's much better for the, the Mac ecosystem and the Apple ecosystem to have a variety of people that can repair these products rather than... Apple is a single choke point where they're the only people that can you do bet. the service. You bet. And I wish they would make them more repairable. It's it's the, using the glue is that's too bad. Yeah, well, and you know what we've seen is a Apple has provided us with our uh, you know a decision in the past like a year ago you could get the 15-inch MacBook Pro or you could get the Retina MacBook Pro that wasn't repairable and people overwhelmingly choose the non-repairable product. Right. So I did too. to some extent Apple is reacting right. to market forces. Right. They find if they create a product that's super thin and doesn't last very long, people prefer that over right. a product that lasts longer. Right. So Apple's to blame, but I think all of us are to blame. Is too. it cheaper to make? Is it, uh, I mean, is there an advantage to making it with the glue? Um, yeah, so I think it does cost uh, save them some some money. There is uh, we've only seen a little bit of video from inside the iPad factories, but one of one of the clips I've seen is of a robot basically gluing right. the iPad shell together. Yeah. Yeah. So anytime you're using adhesives, you can use robots to apply the adhesive and stamp little the screws are harder. Yeah, yeah. We're talking. And, to and so there's a huge difference between design for manufacturing, which is what Apple's en engineers and designers are doing, and design for recycling and design for repair. Very much, uh, sometimes incompatible. And Apple, of and course, is designing to make saying. many, 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 many of them with uh, less skilled labor or robots. 
Well, and so we're asking recyclers, what are you going to do once you right. get millions of these tablets in? And they don't know. They're they're petrified of what's going to happen when they get all because they have to. They're not they going to do just this. Run an iPad through a shredder. Right. They're not going to do this, and they and you want to do this because you want to separate the glass from the heavy metals from the right. uh, batteries. You want the more you can separate, the the more, more you can money. recycle it. The more you can recycle, the more money you can make. Right. You also there's a safety issue with the batteries. You can't just run an iPad battery through right. a shredder; it, it right. can explode. Yes, that's so not good. You have to separate. That's the true of all and lithium ion. Okay, good. There we, we are. Okay, so you've got the LCD off. Kind of. Okay, uh, I have got the LCD screwed, <laughs> but it, there's still a cable holding it underneath uh, this cover. So I need to first remove the cover and then disconnect the LCD. We're talking to Kyle Weens, and and what's your what's your partner's name? Mira, Mira. Miro. Miro. M I R O. Uh -huh. Okay, and Miro and Miro's doing uh, as you can see the the work of disassembling an iPad Air. They're from, of course, iFixit.com. Little disclaimer: they are a sponsor of the Twit Network. But you know what? I love this stuff. We've had them on doing this before. Uh, I think I think the world of Kyle, and I think what you're doing is really important because uh, you do you know a you're raising people's awareness of how this stuff is made, the issue of recyclability, but you're also empowering people to re to fix it themselves. Can you buy all these parts yet? Uh, if you wanted to repair this? <laughs> For the iPad Air? Yeah. No. <laughs> you know, we always get these questions from people. We had someone with the 5S. I swear, two hours after it came out in the U.S., we got a phone call. I need a, I, I, need a, my I broke my glass. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. So um, that's the digitizer is, or the LCD? This is the LCD. Okay. So, no, we're not selling this yet, but now that we've got the part here, maybe we could. So if got you it. want to buy this screen from us, I'll sell it to you. <laughs> that one you could buy. Do eventually all of these parts make it onto the market so that you could go to the supplier and buy them? Yes, uh, uh, with the exception of the main board. So there's there's That's patent custom. IP issues yeah, around making right. that. Yeah. Highly so custom. when we do sell uh, main boards for iPhones and Mac laptops, well, they're pulls out of machines. We'll actually take a laptop apart and use wow. the board out of that. So Apple sell. won't sell those main boards uh, separately. Apple won't sell any any parts. Anything. That's that's the other piece of of the ecosystem. It used to be in the in the laptop realm, you could be an authorized independent Apple you know MacBook repair shop and get service parts from Apple, but they're not selling service parts for iPads or iPhones or iPods to any independent service shops. If you're watching us live, uh, iFixit Jeff is in our chat room and he's answering uh, off offline questions uh, our chatters have uh, as well. Thank you, Jeff, for uh, being in there. Um, so that's a full service. Jeff is over there. He's over on the other side of the camera. <laughs> that's great. Thank you for being in there. That's great. So uh, he was saying this is all one piece. Oh, wow. What are you doing now, Mira? Okay, so um, the front glass and digitizer is actually held in place, um, like, well, originally with the glue, but now there are three cables, and I just managed to free all three of them. And those are attached to the I, main board? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So... <laughs> are, they're not glued in, they're just, are they just plugged in and you just have to kind of pry them loose? Uh, yeah, they're actually uh, plugged in. There's um, one of them has a little toggle switch that um, you have to first uh, flip up before you can remove it. But then the other two with just a little quick twist of the either a spudger or one of these uh, pry tools, uh, it'll come right off. Right now, all the cables are loose, uh, but this is still the rem remnants of the glue holding it in place. So yeah, just oh, have to like. There you go. But <laughs> Oh, that, okay, that's where experience counts, because I would be terrified to do that. <laughs> well, I, I'm still terrified. But anyway. <laughs> Burke McQuinn here, who's done a lot of repair work and kind of is responsible for a lot of our repairs around here, is watching with great interest. We've yeah. we've done our share of uh, a few phone repairs here in the basement and stuff like that. It's kind of fun. Way well, more I think expensive. It's, it's something yeah. everybody should should feel empowered and should feel capable Absolutely. of doing on hardware. So and it's to great to at least even look inside. So what are we seeing now? Is that is that the batteries on the top there? Yeah. So uh, you know, when when the iPad first came out, we took it apart. We said, "Oh, gee, this is an iPhone with a big screen." Right. And that's kind of what we have found. So uh, it's continued that way. So the board there isn't much bigger than the iPhone's board. Uh, you've got two battery cells. Wait a minute, uh, that L thing is the board. This is the main board. That's thing. it? That's it. It's about the and size we'll, of a SIM. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the SIM card, the, uh, this is, uh, so the SIM card is, is there. Yeah. Uh, That's your SIM. I mean, a, I mean a, it's, you it's know, a, a memory a, a memory card, a DIM, <laughs> not a SIM oh, card. Oh, yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> sure. <laughs> that, that's another uh, previous use of SIM with two M's. So uh, that's it. The A7 chip is on there. The uh, graphics chip is on. Everything's on there. Mm -hmm. Amazing. It's not very big. Nothing to it. Batteries are the biggest uh, thing in there. Although, what's yeah. different on this uh, Air so far? Sure. So they went to a smaller battery design, which meant they could do it in two cells instead of three. Okay. Uh, if, you, if you look at the Air's design on the whole, it's more similar to the iPad Mini than it is to the iPad 4. Oh, interesting. So they basically took the iPad Mini and blew it up. And then we see that with, with Apple. I mean, the iPad Mini encapsulated a lot of new design techniques for how they put this in together. Um, so and this is a smaller capacity uh, battery then. Yeah, this is this is 32.9 watt hours down uh, a fair amount from, from the other iPad. And so they were able to uh, reduce the battery size by improving the efficiency of the chips. And this is and kind of a more... See, go ahead. The, the overall, I mean, the size of the device is completely dictated by the battery. Right. Yeah, it's all battery almost. Yeah. Now, uh, isn't this kind of an old-fashioned design? Don't they now, uh, haven't they changed how they layer the batteries and the motherboard and all of that? Or no? This is a pretty, I'm not just talking about Apple, but in general. With how, how they... I thought that they were putting like the, um, I'm just thinking like the Moto X where the batteries, the back is in the back plane there. Is that right? And then the, the motherboard is in between. Yeah, so that's a major difference with Apple's design from uh, pretty much every other tablet out there is, is with Apple, you open the device from the front, you take the, the screen off, and then you work your way through. through. With most other devices, you take the back off, you get the battery, and then you work right. your way through the screen. Because they stack so with, it that way. Yeah. Yeah. So with the Nexus 7, it's very easy to remove, place the battery, but it right. takes some time to get to the screen. Got it. Uh, where with, with the iPad, if you're just replacing the damaged screen, then you get at it. And I think that reflects the design philosophy. Apple's perspective is that we want this thing to work flawlessly for the first year or two. Uh, where I think Google's philosophy is that they want people replacing the battery and they might want the thing to work for five or ten years. Yeah. yeah I mean, does Apple does replace batteries for a fee. You can, you can... They have a battery replacement program. I think on the iPads it's $129. But uh, we don't see very many people take advantage of that. And I would and, bet and that Apple's just swapping another iPad in. They might be, and then, I mean, shipping it back to Depot and, uh, Somebody's and taking doing them in bulk. Okay. Yeah. The challenge with that is that it's inconvenient for people because you're you're wiping the data in the process. You're not giving them their right. data back. Right. Uh, you also have privacy concerns. With I mean, do you really want to give Apple your right. machine with all your data on it? Right, right. Uh, and then if you if you don't live where there isn't an Apple store, then then you've got <laughs> a, a bit of a, a trick. I mean, then you're back to the mail-in days of right. mail-in service. Or I have lots of friends. I mean, I have uh, some family members in Kenya, and they're they're ordering parts from us all the time because they don't have any other way to get wow. something. Wow, yeah. We're, if you're just joining us, we're talking to Kyle Weens and Miro. They're taking apart the new iPad Air at iFixit.com, their headquarters in San Luis Obispo. They they got the uh, teardown up on the site, though, on Friday. They sent somebody to Australia, and they uh, their friends at Mac Fix It uh, lent them the facilities. And So if you want to see the full teardown, iFixit.com has a picture, as always, has it uh, frame by frame. You always do such a good job of this, uh, and it's part of their philosophy of, of making sure that the world is repairable. Including our Halloween costume there. I love, I have to say, I love the Halloween theme of this particular uh, teardown. It's, <laughs> it's unique. That's, uh, <laughs> so we told everyone that's how we take iPads apart, but yeah. as you can see here, it's not the approved official technique. Not the way you do it. This is great. This is great. All of the uh, tools you're using uh, are available online. You can. I see the suction cup that you use. The the little uh, heater. The little. Yeah. Warmer. Well, and uh, yeah, we're pretty obsessive about tool design. So, when, like when we were designing the suction cup, uh, you'd think you'd just go and buy a suction cup off the shelf, but <laughs> we designed this specifically for the iPhone 5s, uh, and we had a glass wall in the office with about a thousand suction cups stuck to it, <laughs> testing it over weeks and weeks. And we went through dozens of different plastic formulations to find that. No, come on. <laughs> really? See, I have one. See, they work good. They really, you could, you could lift the thing up with this. This is a good, yeah. Good well, you have cup. to, the, the uh, iPhone 5S has a, has clips on the glass and it takes a lot of force oh, to boy. lift the glass off. Oh boy. So what are you doing now, Mira? looks like you're using a screwdriver. Yeah, I'm just screwing around. <laughs> um, I set um, you up on that one. Though. <laughs> uh, I'm removing all the screws on the top because I'm trying to get at the logic board. Uh, okay. So 
Uh, in order to do that, it looks like I need to remove some of the stuff from the perimeter first, then the logic board, and then finally uh, the battery is actually connected underneath the logic board, so I need to remove all that fun stuff in order to get to it. It's really a simple design. I mean, it's batteries, logic board, digitizer, and screen, right? It's like four parts. Yeah, what are all Apple's designers doing all the time? Yeah, what, what's it's keeping so them so... It's so easy, anybody can do it. <laughs> Anyone could do it. Am I miss... a battery on and... Yeah. Am I missing any, any critical component, though, in those four parts? Everything, ev everything from memory to uh, operating system, everything's on the, the logic yeah, board. Yeah, so what's happening over time is everything gets moved onto the system on chip processor. Right. So right. on the on the A7 processor, you have yeah you know, the the graphics uh, uh, processor. You've got the memory is actually sandwiched on top of of the processor. So it's a it's a silicon package that's uh, has several level levels of several different wafers that are stacked together in the same. It looks like one chip, but right. they're all layered on top of each other. That's that's the NAND flash here, the Toshiba in yellow. Mm -hmm. um, you've got the motion coprocessor. That's a new thing that a Apple's doing. Motorola does it too. We're seeing more and more companies do that. A separate processor designed, low power processor designed to kind of keep an eye on things while the other processor's sleeping. Uh, the uh, the uh, that's so when you when you're going for a run, you can yeah. use your iPad to track how much. Yeah, you that happens all the time. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> the A7 uh, chip and. Uh, they source stuff from a variety of companies, though. I see they're getting their they memory do. now from, from Toshiba. Do they still get some Samsung RAM? or? They, they do. So so with the Flash, what you'll see if you take apart five different iPads is you might see five I different see. suppliers. I see. Uh, so Flash is a commodity component. The interface is, and the size of the component is exactly the same. So you can get a Flash chip from Toshiba or Samsung, and right. it would function identically. doesn't matter. Their radios are, are almost always from Qualcomm, though, yes? That's it. They've been pretty consistent. Uh, Qualcomm has been making a lot of money off of Apple products lately. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, same thing with with Avago on their on their power amplifiers. Um, so the power amplifiers are are some components that you won't see shrinking as much. I mean, you end up with with limitations of physics on how much power you have to you have to push through the antennas. Right. And, uh, that's something that won't be moved onto the onto the system, the A7, where the, the NXP, the motion uh, coprocessor, could very easily be moved onto the, the main CPU. Is there anything special they're doing for heat dissip dissipation on this? Yeah, so the interesting thing with, with heat dissipation is that the battery life is, is directly uh, proportional to how, how hot it gets. So if you have your phone that's running hot all the time, your battery isn't going to last as long. Oh, in, in terms of months. Oh, that's funny. Uh, I thought it was cold. running down because it was hot. I mean, that it was hot because it was doing something that was running down the battery. But right. in fact, it impacts battery life to be hot. It impacts battery longevity. So, so you got ah. battery life, how much you're going to get in a given day. Uh, and then the, the higher temperature the battery is over time, it degrades the chemistry. Ah, that makes sense. Okay. And, and so, I mean, th there's all sorts of very interesting math around how long you want the battery to last. Um, so Apple, uh, you know, we, we've done some testing and we've talked with experts about whether having the metal back on the iPad increases the battery's longevity compared to a plastic back. Because it's a heat like sink, X7. right? Yeah. Because it is a heat sink. It's a big heat sink. And the sink. conclusion was that these tablets really aren't pulling enough juice to make them hot enough for a plastic versus a metal heat sink uh, to matter that much. Okay. Uh, but on on the phones, it's it's a bigger issue because you're dissipating more heat in a compact package. Well, so and, like my and, iPhone's battery only lasted 11 months because wow. I got hot. Again, that's a big issue because repairability is so low on these things. That if the battery dies, really, it's a you you're gonna have to either give yeah. it to Apple or toss it out. Well, and and that's one thing I'm I, I'm seeing a lot of schools very concerned about this is they're replacing textbooks with iPads, which I think is a good thing, getting getting technology in the hands of kids. Uh, but textbooks had a replacement cycle of seven years. And we don't think iPads are going to last anywhere near seven years in a classroom. I think you're talking no, two, four no, years. Yeah. Not to mention the wear and tear. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, every every school that we know that uses iPads has several dozen broken screens. Right. Uh, you, and a stack in the back. That's what's really a shame here. You, you've got a very powerful device that really is good, is not going to obsolete itself very fast, but is but is designed to, for, for kind of obsolescence. Just because you know the batteries wear out and you can't, you know, you can't replace them. Yeah, it's and I mean, so with the iPad's battery, Apple rates at a thousand charges. So you can imagine a school if you used it every day. 
Uh, you're talking maybe three years. Right. Now, is there danger involved in removing these batteries? It, could you, it, I mean, yeah, so could they explode? Yeah, so this is the issue with recyclers. You've got a lot of energy uh, in, in the package, so you don't want to puncture them. Oh. Uh, and we, um, that's... That's part of why we we think it's so important for us to come out and release a, a, a you know proper procedure for getting inside these things because we do every once in a while slip up and you know stab the battery and if you puncture the battery you have a problem. What what do you do? Run. You run. <laughs> Miro says run. Well, um, the first giveaway is the smell. So as soon as you puncture it, uh, oh all of a sudden things start smelling really bad, but. You, you do have a bit of a, um, you know, you can kind of like play it by ear and see how deep the puncture is. It's not going to immediately spontaneously combust, you know. Right. But, uh, if it's deep enough, you essentially just throw it into a metal sink and... Because uh, <laughs> it could, it could <laughs> actually combust? Well, it will, it, it will be a combustion source, but it will not necessarily blow up. In and of itself, it's so so it, it can heat up. What I kind mean, of safety gear do you guys have? An eye wash station there? Do you have a hood? <laughs> do you have anything at all? <laughs> you know, it, it, we're safety. pretty Ambulance darn good on call. at it. Yeah, I mean, you just it, the important thing is just ventilation if you're going to be okay. puncturing these things. And this is, you know, you've got you've got companies making these incredibly complex products that requires some knowledge of how to how to repair how to recycle properly and there's no information exchange between the manufacturers and folks like us or recyclers well and it's funny because apple charges you a recycling fee i think california mandates this whenever you buy a new product from apple but is that just lip service or do they actually recycle these things do you well, send the it money does go to recyclers uh, and i you know you can take a product to apple and they'll recycle it Okay. Uh, but they're not collecting anywhere close to 1% of the products that they sell. Yeah. Most of it ends up in landfill, I'm sure. A lot of it. I mean, something like 85% of the U.S.'s electronics are just completely unaccounted for. We have estimates that uh, over a billion cell phones are sitting in drawers and closets. That people yes, I believe off. that. I have a half billion myself. <laughs> uh, but well, I've got the other half billion. So <laughs> and these are uh, something to underscore. I'm sure everybody watching knows this, but these are not appropriate to throw in landfill. These these are very hazardous. The lithium ion batteries alone are terrible for landfill. They, sh they need to be properly recycled. You've got all sorts of toxic elements. As a matter of fact, out of these 70 elements on the periodic table that uh, we know how to use, <laughs> that, that we commonly uh -huh. use as in, in industry, there's about 50 of those elements inside wow. an iPad or a cell phone. Wow. And at recycling time, they can only get about 15 of those back. That's the rest of them are irrevocably lost right. in the recycling process. They're used in such trace amounts. Right. Selenium uh, and uh, rare earths and all sorts of yeah, weird. all the rare earths, the neodymium and the magnets. Yeah, uh, and no one is recovering the rare earths in recycling. I have lots of friends that are recyclers that would like to figure out how to make how, how to recycle. They're valuable. It, nobody has figured it out yet. Yeah, they're valuable, but they're not quite valuable enough. Yeah, if it was so the gold, recyclers, there's gold, and they recover the gold out I get of it. That. So they'll yeah. get the gold and the silver and the copper out, right. but they're not getting the rare earths. Yeah. We do, and we have electronic, free electronics uh, recycling drives in every every uh, every town in California, anyway, and I imagine around the country has electronics recycling places where you can do this, and you should do this appropriately with batteries too, not just your electronic goods. Uh, yeah. Uh, so Miro is having issues here. Oh, uh, Miro, uh, no. But he's working his way through. It's not really issues. The it's problem is everything's connected to the logic board. And so in order to take the logic board out, I have to be very careful. And I don't know if you could see my little uh, magnetic mat here, but there are, um, I don't know, close to a dozen maybe different. Oh, man. No. Oh, you just <laughs> dropped one, Kyle. No, it's okay. It's the, it's the little SIM tray. But, oh. Uh, yeah, they're, they're magnetic, so they'll stick to that. Um, so that's so that's interesting. So you, in order to put this back together, of course, you have to have the screws. And are you putting them down, Miro, in some order so you know where they're going to go? Or So when we, um, you know, when we get the new products, we try to figure out what's the easiest way to take apart all the different mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. uh, inside. And then, you know, we create the manuals. Uh, because I don't have a manual for this just yet, uh, we're, I'm actually just kind of separating them into different components and memorizing. Uh, <laughs> and, and we shall oh, see oh, how oh, well oh, memory oh, works. So, what could I mean, possibly go magnetic, wrong? <laughs> so the magnetic mat has the pen and we, we like to write notes. Oh, so. good. Right. 
So if you're following our repair manual, you've got grids and you can just say, you know, step one, step two, Excellent. step three. Excellent. Right. That's a nice way to do it. That's great. We'll call them as, you know, you could call them as components, headphone jack. Right. Uh, so you, you, you can and you will put this back together and it will be fully operable? Yeah. Yes. And, uh, and it won't be and bulging. And that's why he's taking his time on this. Yeah, yeah. So the, the main board is completely glued on, and you can see in that photo the kind of grids of uh, of adhesive that are underneath it. Wow. Why do they? Gosh, they use too much glue. Oh. Their th their goal is to make a product that works as uh, that is incredibly durable and robust for about twelve months. Right. And once once the warranty is up, once they've got a new one out, they don't really care. <laughs> about the the battery or upgradability or anything else well and you got to admit that these feel very compact and solid i mean there's no you know you wouldn't want a rattling sound in there people hey. from time to time complain about the rattling in iphones and i think in most cases that's just the vibration device that has to rattle um yeah or a loose screw or a loose screw <laughs> sometimes those robots they get inattentive and well, a lot of time you have a problem where something isn't working. It's like, okay, we'll just take it apart, reconnect all the connectors, put it back together, and that fixes it. Right, because it's something shook loose. Yeah. Yeah. And what's interesting to, for me with, what is, with Apple's role in the ecosystem is that they're they're saying we're going to make a product and we're going to you know, utilize every technique to reduce manufacturing costs and and make it durable and make it thin. Right. And everybody else that's trying to make something that's upgradable or repairable right. has additional constraints and and it's more difficult. It's not a and priority Apple's at all. Cleaning the clock yeah. with them. Not a priority at all. So Miro is now kind of prying at that uh, logic board mm -hmm. to get it out of the glue. Are you trying to part it from the glued back? Yeah, so so I already got most of the board yeah, see away from the up. glue, but there's this little cable here, well, little, um, that is also uh, connecting other components like the Thunderbolt. Uh, thunderbolt. Lightning, lightning bolt. Lightning. Lightning. There you go. I know lightning. some kind of weather. Whatever, thing. something, yeah. Thunder, um, yeah, lightning. This weather connector. Very, very and frightening. Then, uh, so I'm just trying to, you know, not basically cut something that shouldn't be cut so right. to speak so right. just and for the record miro has never taken apart an ipad air before this what? is his first miro yeah. congratulations <laughs> i just like to go stone cold and <laughs> on live air he's doing it for the very first time so but Walter's you've obviously taken previous apart. ipads apart and so yes. it's, it can't be that much different <laughs> you'd be surprised is it really well i mean when when they design something like the Air, where it is an iPad on the outside, but uh, everything inside can't, I mean, you still have a battery, you still have a logic board, you still have a headphone jack, but how they connect it and how they glue it in place can be completely different. Right. So even though I opened an iPad 3 in the past, that doesn't necessarily trans, I mean, that's still way better than not having done anything, right. but uh, it doesn't give me that much... Um, extra experience for the iPad Air. A certain amount of confidence is valuable, though, to, or at least to know, yeah. okay, this is glued. I know what this is going to feel like. I know I have to exert a certain amount of pressure. If you right. don't have that confidence, it's very difficult to do because you, everything you do, you go, God, am I going to break this? Right. And yeah, the first time you repair anything is the hardest. Right. And we try to translate that uh, essentially confidence into our manuals yes. by being very, very step-by-step -step clear uh, how to do this. Um, you know, hopefully all of your problems with confidence are kind of minimized just because it is that, you know. Right. <laughs> we, we used, uh, we've used iFixit Manuals many times. I remember uh, fixing an iMac, putting a new uh, a hard drive in an iMac when we had to use a suction cup on the screen and everything. Actually, I remember watching Colleen do it, <laughs> but it was from iFixit Manuals. Uh, you guys really uh, do a great job. Huh? We replaced a MacBook Air, right, uh, from with the iFixit manuals, or fixed it anyway. So uh, after you pry this logic board loose, is that pretty much the last step? <laughs> oh, no. oh, no. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's at, at that point, we've got the, the main board out, and then we can start working on the battery, which is going to take a while just to get the battery out because uh, we don't want to puncture it. And those are but, also I mean, glued in, right? The battery is completely glued in. And, yeah, yeah this, is, this is... That's going to be a fun part. Th this design is basically saying we're not going to use screws anymore inside. We're just going to glue the whole thing together. I mean, there's, there's except for the. 20%. I mean, there, there's but the major components connecting them to the to the back panel, the battery, and the and the main board. They're just gluing it on. That and they started doing that with the third generation iPad or 
When did they start gluing so much? Well, there's always been glue on the iPad. The battery in the, in the first gen iPad was was glued down. But yeah. I think it was really the second gen iPad, uh, which was you know the first sort of thinner one, uh, that was. Uh, the most, I mean, ambitious. It sort of set the design direction for where Apple's going with everything right. else. Somebody in the chat room uh, wants to know, uh, Zephyr is asking about the uh, uh, Motorola Ara project where they want to make a modular phone. Right. And I think that's very exciting. Yeah. I mean, presumably modular means also you could rep repair it by replacing sure, a module. Sure. Any component your, your yeah. camera fails, you just swap it out. I think it's very exciting, and it's cool to see it from a – I mean, they're, they're trying to say, okay, well, how can we – modularity is a way to allow people to upgrade right. and, and customize their device. Right. And it goes to uh, Motorola's uh, messaging on the Moto X, which is, yeah, it's a phone, but you can get it with wood. You can right. get it with whatever colors you want, and so they customize it to your experience. Right. As opposed to Apple, where they're saying there is one 5S, or there's right. three colors, but you, you can have any color you want as long as it's those three. Right. We're talking with Jeff Weens and Miro. They're uh, at iFixit.com doing the first teardown of this two-year-old iPad, two-day-old, I'm sorry, iPad Air. Uh, and there you go. There's the logic board. Uh, there's not much to it. It really is very simple. All the chips are on there. What are the little side pieces? Are those connectivity, a lightning cable? Yeah, uh, so you've got you've got the the cables connect along here, right. so and then this is the, the audio jack there. Okay, so this guy on I guess my right, uh, that's actually the logic board. So that um, L shape is all one piece. Right. I actually started prying. This is you know full disclosure. I started prying on the back of this guy because I thought it was a cable that was connected by some connector. Uh, it turns out that it's actually a permanent connection on there. So, yeah. so that I mean, an example of modularity is we'd like to see the the lightning connector d separate from the main board. Sure. So that if you if you damage this, you don't have to replace the whole. It's thing. It's a repairable piece. But this is completely integrated, right. and it's it's soldered down. So if you if you damage can, this, you're replacing yeah. the so whole. So can board. you remove the connector right there on the other side? I don't think so. No, like on here. No. Did you, no, does that make it more reliable, perhaps? Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, possibly. Um, I doubt it. In this case, a connector would have been fine. They use connectors right. elsewhere on the board. It's so easier no, to I don't, manufacture, I don't maybe. You could punch it out. Possibly, or it's a thickness issue. They didn't right. want a connector that thick. Right. Um, you know, there could be bandwidth issues. This is a pretty high bandwidth connector. and. Right. Um, but no, I mean it's modular here. You know, you're connecting something else into it. There's no reason right. it couldn't be modular. On so the that's end. the the lightning cable. On the other side is the camera. Is the camera on there or? Uh, there's a cable that connects to the. So camera. So that is a separate part. Uh, well, yes, the camera is. And yeah, it's actually we, it's, we can get to it. It's still hanging around in there. Okay. So we have here. So you've got the camera. Camera here. We're running uh, out of time. I and I I don't think in five minutes you'll be able to pry those batteries out. I don't think so. We'll keep working at it. Challenge but this accepted. Is... <laughs> <laughs> really? You want to try? Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> I don't, don't puncture it. I don't. <laughs> I don't want to. Well, see. I didn't say there was not going to be a fire. I'm just. Saying. <laughs> I just don't want you to run out of the room and then we sit here <laughs> looking at a blank screen. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to run, run, <laughs> be technical, difficult. Um, actually, in order to take the battery out, we uh, you want to warm it up. up. Yeah. So yeah. I'm gonna go put some um, heaters well, on the hot plate. We're so gonna we're gonna take off. Miro, thank you so much. It's really fun, and of course, you can see the full teardown uh, on iFixit.com where they've gone through uh, each and every piece. It's really a great way to see uh, what makes these up. And without iFixit, we really wouldn't know what the components are. I mean, once you open it up, you actually can then look at the chips, get chip numbers. And get the actual parts. Is that the case? They don't try to obfuscate that stuff, do they? Oh, they do. Absolutely, oh. they do. Yeah, no one else does, but Apple does. So, like, Cirrus Logic does a lot of the audio components for Apple, and they're never allowed to put their brand name on the chip. Jeez. They just paint the number out or something. They paint the number. So the only way to find out is either to find the number in the database or to take the chip apart, actually grind it layer by layer, and, and oh. have our friends at Chipworks look at it with an electron microscope. Oh. But you're uh, serious. And, and then they'll stamp Sears Logic on the logo inside the chip, but not on the outside. Right. So you have to take the dip, take it apart, and yeah. Holy cow, Kyle, this is so much fun. You must really enjoy what you do. We like our job. I love it, uh, and I really love iFixit. I'm really glad that you guys exist. I think you're fighting a good fight. Uh, the repairability score on the iPad Air is a very low two. 
you can't get much lower than that. Um, but, but the Microsoft Surface is the only tablet we've seen that's worse. It's a one. It's a one. <laughs> Kyle, I really appreciate your time. I, I'm sorry we ran out of time before you got the whole thing apart, but I think it's pretty clear you're going to do it. It's going to be fine. And then I w if we had the time, I'd love to see you put it all back together again. When it's done, is it just kind of fit together like it was the it original? I mean, we're pretty good at that, and that's something that I think people should be encouraged that even though the process is a challenge, if you take your time and do it, you absolutely can be successful. It's just a matter of patience. Be methodical. Be methodical. Yeah. Uh, yeah, take your time. Be very careful with some of these. I mean, they're very small and uh, flimsy components. Yeah. But if you, if you take your time, you work your way through it, you can absolutely do it yourself. It reminds me when I was a kid of uh, taking apart a watch. And it came apart so easily. But getting it back together again was not quite so easy. There it is. There's the surface with a repairability of one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, these big giant consumer companies, I mean, they have to make a lot of them. They have to make them reliably and consistently. Uh, I guess that's the sacrifice you make. But, uh, but, but it can be done the other way. I mean, you've, you've got Google with the Nexus showing a different path. You've got HP and Dell have both uh, been talking publicly about how it's important to them to make repairable tablets. Right, right. So uh, it absolutely can be done. It just comes to us as consumers saying to the manufacturers, this is what we want. Right. And, uh, frankly, uh, people like you uh, letting everybody know uh, the truth about how hard this is. Because otherwise, I don't think anybody would – We would, I would it's, have no idea. Right. Well, that, that was the concern was without, without manufacturers releasing service manuals, there's no way to know right. how hard it is uh, to, to repair it. Right. So we, I think, we think it's really important to kind of sunshine into the industry to, to, to share it. This is how it's put together. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Miro. Thank you, Jeff, who uh, joined us in the chat room ifixit.com really appreciate it we'll Thanks, see Leo. you soon take care okay bye bye did you really <laughs> send me around. a heat gun with my name engraved on it we, we could probably arrange that no I, no if you didn't you were just joking okay i was just joking okay because i was i just want to make sure that somebody didn't <laughs> steal it okay <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, Where's my geek? Thank you, guys. No, you know what? No point in sending it to me. I will never take apart an iPad. I, you can just I've, use it to threaten guests. Yeah, right. I'm going to melt you a glue. Thank you, guys.